What's going on people, it's Greg here with another Excel VBA tutorial video. Today we'll be going over how to save the latest files from a set of folders into another folder. So let's get into it. Alright, so on the left, I got my VBA editor. On the upper right, I've got uh, my Excel workbook. On the bottom right, I have my test folder that has folders in inside of it. And what we want to do is grab the latest files in a few of these folders here and save them into this file this folder the latest files folder right here alright so let's go ahead and click into a couple of these folders right click here copy addresses text I'm gonna paste them here um, paste the path let's go here copy addresses text so right click copy addresses text and paste the path and then we'll do another one the sample data files folder right click copy addresses text and we'll paste here and then I'll grab my latest files folder which is where I want to grab the latest files from each of these folders and place them into this one I'll right click copy addresses text and place that here and let's wrap text let's bring this in a little bit Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. Let me try this. Okay. Wrapping the text for each cell. Okay. And then let's give these some headers. So, folder. These are my folders I'm grabbing files from. And this is going to be my destination. So these are my headers. Uh, let's drag this row down a little bit. And I'm going to. insert a button so insert illustrations shapes I'll grab this one here let's make it black and we'll say pull latest files and save here okay Sorry about that. Bear with me for a second. Okay. And then I want to center that. Okay. And then insert another shape. Let's go with uh, an arrow. Okay. All right. Sorry. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Let's make it a little thicker. Jeez. All right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Good to go. This is really giving me a hard time, guys. I'm really sorry about that. All right. So we're going to pull latest files and save here. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So for our sub, let's call the sub save newest files to folder. And we'll declare our variables. We've got my path as string my file as string destination as string newest file as string newest date as date folder count as integer WS as worksheet uh, we're going to do I as an integer and then check 
as an integer. So we'll set our worksheet equal to this workbook sheets sheet one it's the name here sheet one alright and then our folder count is going to be equal to worksheet function count uh, range the range is going to start here a1 so a1 range again a1 again and then we're going to do end xl down because we're counting down from one and then destination so this here this um, cell we're going to do ws so this worksheet cells and we're going to go down to over to so right here to two we want the text in that cell and then we're going to add a backslash so now we're going to use a for loop so for i equals two because we're starting here in the second cell after our header so so for i equals two to folder count which we set right here and then we'll do next i so inside of this for loop we're gonna have my path equals ws cells and we're just gonna be moving down from this here we're gonna keep going down so i is gonna equal here so i is gonna be two at this point so i and then we're gonna be in this first column so i one we want the text and that's we're also going to add another um, backslash here. Oops, backslash. And then my file is going to be directory, my path. And then newest file will be equal to my, f my file at this point. Okay. So then. newest file sorry newest date will be equal to file date file date time my path and my file and then we're gonna use a do while loop so do while my file is not equal to nothing so as long as there's a file in the folder we're going to keep going through the loop oops so if file date time we're going to have my path and my file is greater than newest date at this point then newest file will be equal to my file and then newest date time or no yeah newest date will be equal to file date time my path and my file and then we can end this if so at this point it's going to check through each file and the any given folder and it'll compare the date of the file with the next file and if that's greater than the previous date it's going to replace the newest file and newest date with those um, of that newest file otherwise it'll just keep going through the loop and then by the time you get to the end of the loop you're gonna have the latest file so to make sure we can keep going keep iterating we're gonna do my file equals directory that's it right there and then we can exit the loop so now we'll do so once we find the file that we want or we find the latest file we're gonna open it so workbooks open file name colon equals um, 
my path and newest file and then active workbook so because we're opening this file it's going to become the active workbook so now with this active workbook we're going to save it with this file name so colon equal sign and this file name is going to include the destination path here and whatever the newest file is how do you spell newest <laughs> alright got it and then once we save it we'll just close it immediately because we don't need to have it open at this point and then it should go to the next one so let's go ahead and run it and see what happens and I'll assign this macro to this um, shape here so we can just click on it I'll we'll click on the button so now we have a button here so we'll click and you see the files are getting open it's finding the newest files in each one of these folders here and it's opening them and then saving them to the latest files folder so if you look back at each one of these folders these should be the latest files in each one of those folders so um, if I go back to the test folder and I go to more files and it's already sorted by date modified but you see I've got auto filter copy and paste and that's what I see here if I go to some files cities is the latest file and that's what I have here if I go to sample data files NASDAQ is the latest and that's what I have here so I've grabbed each of the latest files from each of those folders and saved them here in the latest files folder so you saw that it was a little messy there's there a lot of noise so to prevent that we can use application screen updating equals false and then we'll paste that so let's run it again and you see it's asking us if we want to replace the file names because it's going to be copying it's going to be pasting or sorry it's going to be moving those same files that are already here right so we're going to click yes but it's annoying having to deal with that every time so we can prevent that as well by using application display alerts equals false and I actually messed up so this should be true at the bottom not false because we're turning it back on so now the macro should run smoothly so there should be no noise you shouldn't see a bunch of files opening and closing and you you shouldn't be prompted to overwrite any existing files so let's try <laughs> let's try it <laughs> okay that was clean right we're good to go alright so let's go ahead and add a couple more items on this list so we've got um, this cookie sales report folder let's paste it there we've got this no files folder and let's paste it there and I'll do a um, format paint so that these are also these also have text wrapping okay so um, if I come here what I we would expect is that we'll have an additional file from this cookie sales report but this has no files however we're going to run into an error and I'll tell you why in a second so let's click you see those get replaced and then we have the new file but we have an error because of this here and the issue is that there aren't any files in the folder so this breaks down the macro so what we can do is on error we can include an error handler so on error go to no files is what we're going to call it and then we can put it here so it'll go down to no files so no files what happens is it'll say um, message box there are no files in this folder and then we'll include the folder name which will be my path 
Okay. But there's an issue with doing this because if we run into this error, it won't break the macro down, but and it'll skip all this and come here. However, normally the macro is going to run and it'll hit this every time. So we're going to see this message box for each and every one of these files. So let me just go ahead and delete these files. So if I run the macro, we're going to see the pop up every, each and every time a file gets saved here. But we no longer have an error. So we want to prevent this from happening. We only want to see this message if there actually aren't any files in the folder. So that's why we have this check variable. You probably noticed we haven't used it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by setting check equal to zero. Let's do that here inside of the for loop. So check is equal to zero. Um, and then here we'll put check is equal to one. So if it makes it past this error and it enters the loop, we should be good to go. Um, so now here, if check is equal to zero, then we want to see our message. So we're entering the loop, check is going to be equal to zero, and then if we get caught up in this error, we'll skip this section here. So check will still be zero. So we'll see this message. Otherwise, check will turn into one, and we shouldn't run into this message. So let me delete these files just because and then run it again and you see we've got there are no files in this folder the folder that says no files clean and I could move this around so I could cut well let me do this insert cut paste so now we should see it going down three so let me delete these again. One, two, three is where we have no files in that folder. Four, five, look at that. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.